On the evening of May 31, 1974, seven-year-old Cheryl Hansen wanted to walk the 10 minutes to her cousin's house for a sleepover. Her mom initially said no, but ultimately let her go. Cheryl left her home around 5.30 that evening, but never made it to her cousin's house and hasn't been seen since. More than 400 people came out to search for Cheryl in her hometown of Aurora, Ontario, but these searches turned up nothing. A man named Donald Everingham eventually confessed to her murder and drew police a map to where he claimed he'd buried her, but searches in that area also turned up nothing, and he'd given details that ran contradictory to the case files. His confession was later refuted, but as of 2016, he remains a person of interest. Cheryl Ann Hansen is a white female who is four feet tall and 51 pounds at the time of her disappearance with wavy blonde hair and blue eyes. She was last seen wearing a red coat, a brown sweater, and white shoes. She was also carrying a paper bag with pajamas inside. If you have any information about this case, you can contact the York Regional Police Cold Case Unit at 1-866-876-5423. Four-year-old George Barksdale was last seen on the evening of April 21, 1969. He was sitting on the steps of the House of Prayer for All People Church in West Baltimore, Maryland, but it's not clear what happened to him after this. He hasn't been seen or heard from again. Investigators searched over 60 houses in the area and questioned almost 200 people, but George seemed to have vanished without a trace. Today, police believe George was kidnapped. Online speculation ranges from the theory that he was illegally adopted to the idea that he wandered off was injured or killed somehow, and his body has never been found. At least one person suggested that he was the victim of a hit and run, and the driver hid his body. George Barksdale is a black male who is two feet six inches tall at the time of his disappearance, with black hair and brown eyes. He has a birthmark on his left calf and was last seen wearing corduroy pants, a red, white, and blue polo, and a pullover shirt. He went by the nickname Sputnik and would be 56 years old if alive today. If you have any information about George's case, you can contact the Baltimore Police Department at 410-396-2525. Billy Gaffney was also four years old when he was last seen at his apartment building in Brooklyn, New York, on February 11, 1927. He was last seen playing in the hall with two of his child neighbors. One of the neighbors, three-year-old Billy Beaton, was later found on the roof of the apartment building and said the boogeyman had taken Billy. He described this man as a slim, older man with gray hair and a mustache. Billy Gaffney was seen later that day by a streetcar driver in Brooklyn who said he was with an elderly man with a mustache. At first, police believed Billy had simply wandered off, but the weeks and months went by with few answers, if any. There were some alleged sightings, including one all the way in South Dakota, but no solid leads would come for over six years. In 1934, 64-year-old Albert Fish was arrested for the murder of 10-year-old Grace Budd, who had disappeared in 1928. After leading police to her body, he was convicted of her murder and sentenced to death the following year. At his trial, the streetcar driver who had seen Billy the day he went missing identified Fish as the elderly man he'd been with. Fish initially denied knowing anything about Billy's disappearance, but later confessed to killing him. Police were skeptical of this claim at first, but Billy's case was later closed and is no longer being investigated. Billy's mom was also skeptical of Fish's involvement. She even visited him in prison in 1935, but he refused to talk to her. 
For years after his disappearance, Billy's parents set a place for him at the table every year on Christmas, which was also his birthday. Scott Andreas Douglas was born on July 1st, 1950. His parents divorced when he was very young, and his mom later remarried a man named William Sims. Andy and his older brother Donald ended up taking their new stepdad's last name. By 1961, the family was living in Wichita Falls, Texas. William Sims, who was in the National Guard, had been stationed in Louisiana at the time due to the Berlin Crisis. On Saturday, December 9th, 11-year-old Andy was at home with his brother while their mom was at work. Sometime between 12.45 and 1 p.m., Andy went outside to play. When his mom got home around 2.30, he was no longer there. Donald and some other family members went out to look for him, but couldn't find him. Around 8 o'clock that night, the police were called. Police and volunteers would continue to search for Andy. Early investigators followed up on a sighting that put him at Lake Wichita around 3 p.m. the day he was last seen. They also interviewed people in the area who had a liking for children, as stated by Cron.com, but none of this led anywhere. So what happened? Was Andy kidnapped by a predator, sexual or otherwise? Did he die of exposure on the cold and rainy day that was December 9th and his body hasn't been found yet? Whatever the situation, Andy's disappearance is the oldest cold case in Wichita Falls and he hasn't been seen or heard from in over 60 years. Andy Sims is a white male who was 4 feet 11 inches tall and 90 pounds at the time of his disappearance with blonde hair and blue eyes. He wears glasses and was last seen wearing a black turtleneck, a black coat, blue jeans, and a black cap. If alive today, he would be 71 years old. If you have any information about this case, you can contact Detective John Laughlin of the Wichita Falls Police Department at 940-761-7762. You can also reach him by email at john.laughlin at wfpd.net. Contact information for all of these cases can also be found in the description. If you found this video interesting or informative, I would love it if you would like and share it. For more true crime videos and other general dark content, I hope you'll consider subscribing and hitting that bell. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.